In this video, we're going to look at the relationship between lines. Now, in two dimensions, lines can interact in three different ways. We can have two lines that, well, two lines that intersect. That's one possibility. Another possibility is that we have two lines that are parallel. This is L1 and this is L2. And then we can also have a third possibility, so parallel. And the other possibility is that we have what's called coincident. So we have this line here, and there's another line that lies right on top of it. Basically, with this particular, uh, this particular arrangement with coincident, coincident, you have infinite solutions in common. If they intersect, you have one solution in common. With parallel, you have no solutions in common, and with coincident, you have infinite solutions in common. Now, in three-dimensional space, there is a third option, and that third option is called skew. When, when lines are skew, it means that you have two lines that they may look like they are, that they intersect, but if you look at them from a different angle, you're going to see that they do not intersect. So if you have skew lines, and I can't really draw this on a two-dimensional surface, but you are looking at lines that don't intersect, they don't intersect, and they are not parallel, and not parallel. So we're going to look at a couple of different examples and see if we can identify whether these are, whether the relationship between the lines are, are that they are intersecting, whether they're uh, parallel, whether they are coincident or whether they are skewed. So let's look at this first one. So it says here, classify the following pair, the following line pairs as either, we're looking at either parallel, intersecting, whether they're coincident or whether they are skewed. And in each case, it says find the measure of the acute angle between them. And it's not really even necessary to say find the acute angle. If I'm finding the angle between two lines, we assume that it's acute anyway. So let's look at both of these lines. We have this first one. We're going to look at both of these lines and examine them as vector equations. So we have x, y, and z, and that equals 1, 2, and 3, plus t times 2, negative 1, and 1. We have another line over here as a vector equation. We have x, y, and z. And that equals negative 2, 3, and 1, plus s times 3, negative 1, 2. Now, we can, let's look, let's look at and see if these two lines are parallel. Now, if they are parallel, it means that we can take this direction vector here of 2, negative 1, 1, and multiply it by some scalar to get to the other direction vector of 3, negative 1, 2. So, I can multiply if, I, if my... If my scalar, if the scalar was, say, 3 halves, then 3 halves times 2 is going to give me 3. So I have, in this case, I would have uh, 3. And if this is my scalar, then I have 3 halves times negative 1. That's going to give me, what, negative 1.5. Negative 1.5 is not the same thing here. So we have negative 1.5 or negative 2 uh, 3 halves. So we already see that it's not the same. So k, there is no k value. We could try one more time. We could see this 3 halves times the 1 is going to give us 3 halves. But there is no k value that's going to take this as a multiple if I uh, multiply that k uh, scalar to our vector that we're going to get to this other vector. So these are definitely not parallel. So if they're not parallel, they're also not coincident. So the two different choices we have at this point are, so either Either we have, um, we have intersecting, intersecting, or skew. Those are the only choices. So let's look at this. Let's assume that they're intersecting. So we have, if they're intersecting, we have two points, oh, sorry, we have a point in common for both of these, um, these vector equations. So we have this x value here of x equals 1 plus t uh, two. So we could rewrite this as 1 plus 2t, and if that equals um, x, and we have this other value over here that's equal to x, we have negative 2 plus 
3s. We have another equation of our y values are 2 minus t, and that should equal our other y value over here of 3 minus s. And we have a third equation of 3 plus t, and that should equal our z value over here of 1 plus 2s. So I'm going to, well, we can now, we could just use any of these, and we have a system of equations to solve for s and t. So let us, so I'm going to just simplify this a little bit. So I have, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. That's going to give me, that's going to give me negative t equals uh, negative 2. So 3 minus 2 is going to give me 1 minus s. And so in this case, t equals 1 minus s. I'm going to take this value of t and I'm going to plug it into here to find out what s is. So I have 3 plus 1 minus s equals 1 plus 2s. I'm then going to solve for s. So I have 3 plus 1 minus s equals 1 plus 2s. I'm going to add s to both sides. That's going to give me, or well, 3 plus 1 is going to give me 4. 4 equals 1 plus, and this was, I added an s here, so I have 2s's plus 1s, that gives me 3s. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, so that gives me that 3 equals 3s. And I divide by 3 to both sides, and that's going to give me that s equals 1. So I'm going to take this s equals 1, and I'm going to plug it back into any of these equations to find out. I'll just go ahead and throw it right back into here. And so that's going to give me that I have s, uh, sorry, 3 plus t equals 1 plus 2 times 1. And so that's going to give me, uh, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, so that gives me 2 plus t equals uh, 2. And I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, so that gives me t equals 0. So if these two lines intersect, when I plug in 0 for this equation, I'm going to get some value of x, y, and z. And if I plug in the s value for this equation, I should get the same x, y, z values. So let's go ahead and try this. I'm going to plug in the 0 for t up here. So that's going to give me uh, when t equals 0, I end up with point 1, 2, 3. And when s equals 1, then that's going to give me negative 2 plus 1 times 3. Well, 1 times 3 is 3. 3 plus negative 2 is going to give me 1. So when s equals 1, we end up with 1. And let's take that uh, 1 and uh, continue on with the other parametric equations. 3 plus 1 times negative 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 3 is going to give me 2. And if I take that 1, continue on. 1 times 2 gives me 2, and 2 plus 1 gives me 3. So I see that I end up having the same point. So my two choice, so I definitely have intersecting points. So I know that these two lines here, um, that they are, I thought I, oh, I, sh I showed that they are uh, intersecting. So these must intersect. Intersecting because the lines are not um, are not parallel, and they have a unique intersection, and they have a unique intersecting point. So there you go. There's my answer for that one. So I'm going to move on and look at these two intersecting lines here. I think I was supposed to find the angle. I think I was also supposed to find the angle between these two lines. But when you look at the angle between two lines, you're just going to look at the direction vectors here. So you're, you're, I'm not going to do all of this, but you know the idea is that we have cosine theta, and that's going to equal our u dot v over our, the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. And we're just looking at the... Um, the direction vectors. So that's going to give me cosine theta equals u dot v. So that's going to be 
2 times 3 plus negative 1 times negative 1 plus 1 times 2 all over the magnitude of our first vector, so the square root of 2 squared plus 1, negative 1 squared plus 1 squared times the square root of 3 squared uh, plus negative 1 squared plus 2 squared. So we basically take the inverse of cosine and throw all that into our calculator and basically there you go, that would give us our the angle. Make sure that the angle, the angle has to be acute though. We're looking at an angle that is less than 90 degrees. All right, let's look at two, two more lines. Both of these lines are right now, they're demonstrated in uh, parametric equations. So I'm going to rewrite these parametric equations in our vector, in ve vector equation form. So I have x, y, and z, and that equals negative 1, 2, and 4, plus t times our direction vector of 2, negative 12, negative 12, and 12. And our other vector equation is going to be x, y, z, and that equals negative 3, 2, negative 1, plus s times 4, 3, negative 1. Now, let's first, let's, uh, let's look at whether these two lines are parallel. So is there some scalar, so is there some scalar that when I multiply by this direction vector here, I'm going to get 4, 3, and negative 1. This is a 3, not a negative 3. I'm really butchering that anyway. So, well, if k is 2, then I have 2 times 2, that's 4. But if k is 2, then 2 times negative 12 should give me negative 24, and that's not negative 24. So, so these lines are definitely not parallel. And if they're not parallel, then, well, what, they cannot be coincident either. So either, either we have intersecting or skew. We have lines that are intersecting or are skew. All right, let's assume that they're intersecting. So let's go ahead and um, if I have, I have two sets of x values, so I have negative 1 plus 2t, and that equals negative 3 plus 4s, we have 2 minus 12t equals 2 plus 3s, and 4 plus 12t, and that equals negative 1 minus s. So I'm going to take any of these, I'll take these two right here, and I'm just going to, I have a system of equations now, and I'm going to solve for t and s. So let's look at, um, let's just, let us just, let's move everything to all the s's and t's to one side and our other values to the other side. So that's going to give me 3s, uh, negative 3s, I'm subtracting 3s from both sides, minus 12t, and then that equals, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, it's going to give me 0. And then I'm going to have, uh, we're going to do the same thing for, let's make sure I finish this one, I have negative, I have negative 3 s minus 12 t and then I subtracted to yeah okay so on this one we have I still have these this 12 t over here I'm gonna add s to both sides so that gives me s and then I'm gonna subtract 4 from both sides so that's gonna give me negative 5 now I see that it'd be easier to use elimination here so I'm going to eliminate so that would give me negative 3 s plus s gives me negative 2 s and negative 12t plus 12t gives me 0, and then that equals 0 minus 5, that's going to give me negative 5. So s in this case is going to be, I'm going to divide by negative 2 to get 5 halves. Well, what is, what is t? So I'm going to take this 5 halves and I'm going to plug it in to one of these equations, it doesn't matter which one, I'll plug it in right here. And so that's going to give me 4 plus 12t equals negative 1, minus 5 halves. Well, minus 5 halves is what, 2.5? Oops, 2.5. So I just think it might be easier to deal with fractions right now. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides, so I get 12t equals, and then I have 4, I'm, I subtracted 4 from both sides, so I have negative 4 minus 1, that's negative 5, negative 5, 
minus 2.5 is going to give me negative 7.5. I'm going to divide by 12 to both sides. So that gives me that t equals, and then I'm just going to use my calculator really quick, 7.5 divided by 12 is going to give me, so I have um, this negative 5 eighths. So I'm going to take this, so I have these, I have an S value and a T value. Now, if these lines, if they are, if they intersect, then if I plug in this five halves in for S, it'll give me an X, Y value that will be the same as if I plug in this T value over here. So let's just go ahead and plug these in. So I'm going to plug in this five halves in for, uh, for S, so I get negative, um, negative. I have negative 3 plus, and my S value is 5 halves, and then I'm going to multiply that by 4, and that's going to give me 7. So when S equals 5 halves, I get 7. I'm going to plug it in here too, so I have, for my Y value, so I have 2 plus, plus 5 halves uh, times 3. And that's going to give me 9.5. We'll do the same thing for our z value of negative 1. And then plus this 5 halves times negative 1. And that's going to give us negative 3.5. And are we going to get the same thing over here if we plug in our negative 5 eighths for t? So I have negative 1 plus our t value is negative 5 eighths. Uh, times 2, and that gives me, I can already see, so um, when t equals negative 5 eighths, I have negative 2.25, and then 2 plus this, this negative 5 um, eighths times negative 12, that's going to give me 9.5, well that looks the same as this 9.5. Let's look at the next one. We have, um, we have 4 plus our t value of negative 5 divided by 8, and then times 12, and we get negative 3.5, negative 3.5. So we don't quite have the same thing here. Um, we don't have, I have, it looks like I have everything the same except for this x value. So we're going to conclude, because we don't have the same point for both of these equations, that we have lines that are skew. So these lines are skew because they are not parallel. They are not parallel, but they also don't have, they don't have a point in common, but also don't have a common point or common coordinates if you want. So we have skew. These ones are skew. If you recall what skew are, you have two lines. They look like they're parallel in three-dimensional space, but if you were to rotate the image, you're going to see that those two lines, that they do not intersect. Two lines that are not parallel and they also do not intersect. All right. I'm going to look at C. So I have my vector equations of x, y, z, and that equals 0, 3, negative 1, plus t times their, our direction vector of 6, 8, 2. Our other um, vector equation is x, y, z, and that equals 2, 0, 1, plus s times 3, 4, 1. 3, 4, 1. Okay, so uh, I want to know whether there's some scalar I have 6, 8, 2. Is there some scalar that I can multiply to this vector that will bring me to this 3, 4, 1? Well, what if k is 1 half? 1 half times 6 gives me 3, 1 half times 8 gives me 4, and 1 half times 2 gives me 1. So these, these two lines are either, they are either parallel, parallel, or they are coincident. 
They are coin coincident. So let's see, let's just go ahead and find whether they are parallel. So well, let's see if let's see if they have any any points in common. Let's check to see if they have any points in common. Because if they have any points in common, then they are coincident. So we're going to do the same thing. We have this zero plus six t equals two plus three s. We have three plus eight t equals zero plus four s. We also have negative one plus two t equals one plus s. We're gonna grab two and we have now we have a system of equations. So I have, um, I'm going to just bring the same thing. We're going to bring all the variables to one side and everything else will be on the other side. So that gives me 8, 8, T. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So that, oh, I'm going to subtract 4S and subtract the 3. I'm going to do all this at once. So I'm going to subtract the 4S. So that gives me 4S, negative 4S. And then I'm going to subtract the 3. That gives me negative 3. All right, I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to, I have this 2T here. I'm going to subtract S from both sides, so minus S. And then I'm going to add one to both sides, so that's going to give me 2 over here. So I don't know. I think I'm going to use, I'm going to multiply over here. I'm going to multiply this last line here by, ooh, how about 4? Um, how about negative, negative 4? Negative 4. So if I multiply by negative 4, that's going to give me 8t, and then this became negative 8, so that gives me 0. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I have a negative 4 times a negative s. That's going to give me a positive. Negative 4 times negative s is going to give me a positive 4s. So negative 4s um, plus uh, 4s is going to give me 0, so plus 0, and that equals negative 3 plus 2, and that's going to give me negative 3 plus 2 is going to give me negative 1. So I have 0 equals negative 1, which doesn't really make sense. 0 equals negative 1 um, gives me no value then for s or t. So we can conclude then that these are parallel. These two lines are parallel. Uh, there are no, there are, there's no s or, or t value that I can plug in to even see that I have intersecting lines, and they shouldn't be intersecting anyway. But I don't definitely do not have two points in common because I don't have an S and T value. So we are going to conclude then that these lines are parallel. These lines are parallel, parallel, because the, um, the direction vectors, the direction vectors, are scale, scale factors of each other, are scale factors of each other, each, each other, and, and we don't have a point in common, and the, there is no common point that they share. So this one is parallel. All right, now there are three here that I'm going to skip. If you want to pause the video and do these on your own, you're welcome to, but I'm going to move on. I just want to make sure that I get all four of the cases. I think that the other ones are, I think that you should be able to figure out those ones on your own. Uh, but if you at least have all four cases, I think that's going to be helpful. All right, so let's look at these parametric equations and I'm going to rewrite them as a vector equation. So I have X, Y, and Z and that equals one 0, 1, plus t times 2, negative 1, 3. My other vector equation is going to be x, y, z, and that equals <coughs> our starting point of 3, negative 1, 4, and s is our parameter times our direction vector of negative 4, 2, and negative 6. So, all right, let's look at whether, we, whether these are parallel. So is there some scalar that if I multiply it to 2, negative 1, 3, that I'm going to get this negative 4, 2, and, and negative 6. Um, how about negative 2? So what if, it, if k equals negative 2? Then I have negative 2 times 2, that's negative 4. I have negative 2 times negative 1, which is a positive 2. 
and I have negative two times three, that's going to give me a negative six. So there is a scale factor, which means that these two, these two equations are either going to be parallel, parallel, or if they are not parallel, they are coincident. Coincident. Those are my choices. Those are my possibilities for, for, these, two, for these two lines. All right, so let's find out what happens when we try to find a common point that they have. So actually, I, it could be easier to just find some value, some value of t that's going to give me some x value here. Um, in fact, I, I, we could do that. We could say, we could say what, if, what if t is 0? So t equals 0. If t is equal 0, when t equals 0, then I end up with 1, 0, 1. Well, what if we wanted to do the same thing over here? I want my first entry, this x here, to be 1. So I have, I have 1. Uh, 1 equals 3 plus negative 4s. I subtract 3 from both sides. That's going to give me negative 2 equals negative 4s. I'm going to divide by negative 4 to both sides. That gives me s equals 1 half. So if s is 1 half, then I have 1 half times negative 4, which is negative 2. And then negative 2 plus 3 is going to give me 1. So when s equals 1 half, then I get 1. Or let's see what the other ones are. I'm going to take that 1 half. 1 half times 2 is going to give me 1. And then 1 minus 1 is going to give me 0. Take the 1 half, plug it in here again. And I get 1 half times negative 6, which is going to give me negative 3. And then negative 3 plus the 4 is going to give me 1. And so in fact, I do have the same point. Well, you can't have parallel lines that still intersect unless they are coincident. So we have uh, these lines are coincident because, because they are, we have parallel, because the direction vectors, the direction vectors are parallel or scale factors of each other. And the uh, equations still share a point. The equations share a point. And I want to try one other thing, though. I want to see what would happen. What is it going to look like if I try to find a, a, a common point that they have? So again, we're going to write this as 1 plus 2t equals 3 minus 4s. And then we have 0 plus uh, negative negative t equals negative 1 plus 2s, and then 1 plus 3t, and that equals 4 minus 6s. Now we're going to find, we're just going to grab two of these, it doesn't matter which ones, and then we have, a, we have a system of equations. For this one here, if I multiply both sides by, um, by negative 1, I'm going to get t equals 1 minus 2s. So I'm going to take this value and I'm going to substitute it. I just think it's easier in this case to substitute instead of eliminate. That's going to give me 1 plus 3 times 1 minus 2s equals 4 minus 6s. I'm going to distribute now to give me 1 plus 3 minus 6s, and that equals 4 minus 6s. I'm going to add 6s to both sides, 6s, and that's going to give me, and then 1 plus 3 gives me 4. And so 4, this is 0. This cancels out as well. 4 equals 4, which is a true statement. And because it is a true statement, then we conclude that it doesn't matter what s or t equals. S, can, s or t can equal anything, and we're still going to find that we have a true equation. Because s and t can be anything, we're, we're, what that means is that we have two lines that are coincident. They are overlapping each other. So we also, again, another net more evidence that we have coincident lines here. Hope you have a wonderful day. I hope this was helpful. And I will see you in class in the, sh in the short future.